When you have a project or you have a goal and you can't seem to get yourself to do what you know, you need to do this. One or more of these techniques can help you really steer away from procrastination and help you get back on track. And it requires a little bit of practice every single day. How do you stop avoiding the things that you need to accomplish in your life? Can you all think about right now something that you know you need to do, something that's very important to your health, to your work, to your family, for yourself, but you keep on putting it off? Procrastination really is the practice of doing more pleasurable things in a place of less pleasurable things. And so you're putting off impending tasks to a later time. Procrastination can lead to feelings of guilt, inadequacy, depression, self-doubt. I mean, it robs you from the life that you desire and the life you really deserve. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you my five quick brain tips on how to beat procrastination. So number one tip on how to overcome procrastination. If you're such a great procrastinator, I recommend that you procrastinate about procrastinating, meaning that you put it off. Yes, the best way to overcome procrastination may be to put it off and delay your procrastination for another day. And that's kind of tongue in cheek, but if you are really good at the ability to put things off, then put off putting things off. Number two is start somewhere. All right, start somewhere. And this really employs the Zygarnik effect, basically saying that once somebody starts something, they need to finish it in order to have closure and they retain that information. So using this for procrastination, start somewhere. And if you start somewhere, you're more likely to complete. Number three is to break it down break it down. This is where you break down this project or your goal into bite-sized pieces because one of the biggest challenges that keep you from doing the things that you need to do is sometimes you look at it like a really big monster and it's so big and you don't even know where to start and as the saying goes the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. So you can do this with your workout. Instead of anticipating the entire workout, break it down. Tell yourself, I'm just going to put on my workout shoes and just get to the gym. This is employing a concept from BJ Fogg, an amazing, brilliant man. He created this concept called tiny habits. So for example, if you can't get yourself in the habit of flossing your teeth, for example, which we know adds years to your life, he says, just floss one tooth. Because who's going to floss just one tooth, right? You're going to obviously do the second and the third and the fourth, but this is breaking it down into tiny little steps because it's less intimidating than the big monster that you might have it in your mind that keeps you from doing what you need to do. And it requires a little bit of practice every single day. So I don't ask people just pick up a book I just and read it. I, I, I want them just to read one sentence because I know they won't stop with one sentence. They'll go on the second sentence and the third and so on. And so the third step again is break it down. The fourth key that I would give you to be able to beat procrastination is to be kind to yourself. And now really listen to this because it might surprise you, but beating yourself up because you didn't go to the gym or you didn't make your meal prep or you didn't do this at work or whatever it is that you need to do actually has the reverse effect of what you're trying to do. It actually, you would think that if you gave yourself some pain and some guilt that you're more likely to change your behavior. But according to research, it actually says the exact opposite that a lot of us beat ourselves up and because we miss something that's good for us and research in the area of self-compassion tells us that if you're kind to yourself, if you're light with yourself, you're more likely to be able to commit and follow through. So don't give yourself a lot of grief about not being able to make it to the gym, for example. Tell yourself, you know, I'm human. This happens to the best of us. I'm going through a lot, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. So be light with yourself and make a plan so that you get it done. And that's really the key. The fifth thing I would recommend to be able to overcome like this thing called procrastination is to schedule it. And this sounds like it's obvious and it's common sense, but again, it's not common practice. And finally, here's a bonus one. I wasn't going to add this, but number six, I would say, is come up with your why. Come up with your why. 
One of my favorite books is by a friend of ours named Simon Sinek. You might be familiar with his TED Talk. He wrote a book called Start With Why. And basically it says that your purpose is what's going to drive you and give you energy. And when you have a project or you have a goal and you can't seem to get yourself to do what you know, you need to do this. Try to imagine and visualize vividly the results that you want. Tap into the reasons for action and you're able to get past procrastination. I believe that there is a success formula. I call it H cubed. It goes from your head to your heart to your hands. But here's the thing, you could visualize your goals in your head and affirm things in your head all day, but if you're not acting with your hands, usually what's missing is a second H called your heart. The heart represents emotion, the energy of motion. Make a list of the things that you'll get from doing this task that you're putting off. What will it give you? And once you tap into that why, you're more likely to do it because you have fuel, you have momentum, and that's really the key.